that's an appropriate website for me because I'm the daughter of a hillbilly. Hi guys, Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network. I'm dedicating today's video to Cindy Tedeschi. I have never made this before and I don't understand what a ratio of 1 to 6.7 is as according to the directions on the package. So I went to the wonderful world of Google and I found the Hillbilly Housewife and she gave better conversions for this particular how to convert this into milk. So I will link her website in the description box below. She has some really cool ebooks if you're interested. And no, I'm not affiliated. I, I don't even know who she is. I just checked out her website and found her conversions. And of course, y'all know I'm an intuitive, right? I read people's energy. She's got good energy, so that's why I'm referring her. I think I'm going to make a cup. A third cup of powder to a cup of water. Mix this up. Now people will tell you to stir and stir and stir and stir and then if you're going to drink this fresh you want to refrigerate it but I'm not going to drink it fresh I'm going to ferment it so I can bypass all that. I'm going to put this in my Vitamix and you can see there's a lot of stuff on the bottom right. That was my vibe. It wasn't incorporating and then I'll pour it in with my grains. Okay that is well incorporated. I have a lot of grains in there but that's just how I freeze my grains. I freeze them in large quantities because I typically tend to ferment a gallon of milk at a time and that's it. Now I'm just going to leave this on the counter to ferment. So here's the thing. I'm not a big fan of milk powders. I've never tried whole milk powder. Skim milk powder just makes me absolutely gag. That said, I have never ever fermented milk powders. And part of the reason why I bought this is because, you know, the world's changing. We have all seen that our food supply is not very secure, nor is the distribution of our food supplies secure. Also, I fully intend on raising sheep for milk and for meat, but primarily for milk because that is my go-to milk when I drink. That said, I will probably also have a at least one or two cows because I want the cream for my coffee and for other recipes. You don't get the same kind of cream from sheep as you do from cattle. So for that reason, I already know that I would probably end up with copious amounts of milk that I'm not going to be able to consume all at once. And dehydrating whole milk could be a really viable alternative for someone that raises their own milking animals and cannot consume the quantity that they actually receive. I suspect that if I am successful with this recipe today that my next step will be to then dehydrate whole milk powder. I do have a bunch of eggs that I would like to dehydrate. The remaining of the water glass eggs. I've never used powdered eggs before but I'm willing to experiment and to try. And similarly I will do the same with milk but I want to make sure I'm going to like it first and this is something I know about myself. Even if this is successful, if I don't like it, there's no point in me converting liquid milk into a powder if I don't like it. That said, if I do, to convert it into a powder and then ferment it is incredibly economical. It's been four days since I made this and now I just want to strain it. I'm assuming it's sour enough find out. <clears throat> I've had many people come to workshops and ask me if I rinse my jars before creating a new batch of milk kefir. No, I don't. You don't need to. And in fact, I would recommend against it because in this jar are tiny little grains. Right there, for example, is one that when you add milk will continue to grow. Don't 
rinse your drawers. There's no need. All you need to do is make sure the outside is clean, put your grains back in, and add a new batch of milk, and you should be good to go. My grains are small because I've had them in the freezer for a while. Once I keep them out for a good couple months, they start to fluff up and, and multiply. All right, so let's uh, let's give it a taste. Mm. This would not be my first choice uh, as a milk. Obviously, my first choice would be something that's fresh out of the animal, whether it's cow or goat or lamb. And then obviously, my next choice would be something that's probably pasteurized at a grocery store. Not ultra pasteurized, but pasteurized. Because I live in a major metropolis and in a country where raw milk is illegal. <sighs> I know, I know. Anyway, whole milk powder as a food for survival, for uh, a backup if you're a prepper and you always want to be prepared regardless of whether you're preparing for some major catastrophe or just maybe you, you know, you lose your job for six months and it takes you a while to get another job or something. Prepping doesn't always have to be a doomsday thing, right? It would be warranted to have some of the whole milk powder in your pantry. Coming to the finished fermented product, could be the, the milk that they originally used. It tastes different than what I'm used to. Mind you, this has only been sitting for four days and if you've been watching my videos, you will know this about me. After three or four days of fermenting milk on my counter, I typically put it in the fridge for a good four to six months and forget all about it. For the simple fact that I know there's still a lot of sugars and as the bacteria continue to consume the sugars, they continue to create more probiotic and I get that nice sour taste that I really like. So I think the real taste test with this and the most genuine assessment of this would be <laughs> it's funny as I'm talking to you I'm hearing spirit whisper in my ear that apparently I need to put some vitamin D liquid drops into this. This is probably conventional feedlot dairy cattle. For that reason if anyone out there has grass fed and grass finished genuinely pastured um, animals that produce milk and you end up creating a whole milk powder from that, uh, maybe contact me. I'd love to promote you on this channel because why not? You know, what's good for any person's body is worthy of letting the world know, right? So yeah, I think this might be better, obviously, if it's grass-fed and grass-finished. The fact that Spirit told me to put vitamin D in it, I suspect this is food lot dairy. And my true evaluation will come in about three or four months time after this is truly soured. And I will compare it to regular whole milk. Uh, and I suspect it would only be fair if I was to compare this with traditional feedlot whole milk dairy uh, from the grocery store. So yeah, very interesting. If you like your fermented milk kefir and you don't need it to be super sour, Give it a try and let me know what you think compared to regular whole milk that you buy and ferment at the store. I guess for myself the takeaway here is that knowing now that I can ferment whole milk powder, I would almost be tempted to buy some skim milk powder and try fermenting that for the simple fact that sometimes I want fermented whey and I like skim milk for the creation of fermented whey. So it might be worth buying some and keeping it in my pantry as a backup just in case something happens to the milk supply chain or my own circumstances where I'm just not able to get it. If you're interested in buying grains from Cindy, I will leave her link in the description box below. Thanks again, Cindy, for prompting me to this, for challenging me to try using this whole milk substitute. I'll be back in about four to six months and I will conclude my thoughts and opinions about this finished product. Until then, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.